2023 is going to be an incredibly exciting year for the Mac. We could be seeing anything from a 15 inch MacBook Air, completely redesigned Mac Mini, a three nanometer super powerful M3 Apple Silicon chip, and hopefully a redesigned Apple Silicon Mac Pro. Now, as you guys know, I don't usually do leaks or rumor content. In fact, I can count on one hand the number of rumors videos I've made, but I do want to talk about what actually makes sense for Apple to release next year or even in November this year and what we have a really good chance of seeing. Let's start with everyone's favorite product, the MacBook. Now, already in the last 12 months, we've seen a ton of innovation and updates. The 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros, the M2 MacBook Air, and probably the most controversial MacBook in a while, the 13 inch MacBook Pro. So what MacBook updates could we be seeing in 2023? Well, let's start with an unlikely one, the notch. Since its introduction in the iPhone 10 in 2017, the notch has been a staple of iPhones ever since. Last year, Apple decided to bring this design feature across to the MacBook, and when the M2 MacBook Air came out earlier this year, everyone quickly realized that it was here to stay. Now, there's some people that don't mind it, but a lot of people absolutely hate the notch. Now, me personally, I don't really care, but I'd also much rather prefer either no notch at all or a slightly thicker top bezel instead. On light backgrounds, the notch really does stick out a lot and is very noticeable. Fast forward a few months though, and the iPhone 14 was released. And ta-da, the notch is completely gone and has been replaced with the dynamic island. Just a few months after Apple introduced the now outdated notch to the M2 MacBook Air. So what was originally a design choice by Apple to have their MacBooks and iPhones share the same notch and visual design, now it's completely different. So what's gonna happen? Well, I don't believe that Apple will implement a dynamic island to the Mac despite some of the leaks and rumors floating around out there. I mean, there's already plenty of screen real estate for notifications and other alerts. Personally, I think Apple will keep the notch on all MacBooks until we see the next major redesign in three to five years. And at that point, I do think the design will be changed. And hopefully we'll finally get some kind of super thin bezel design. Now, before I get into the new M3 chips we'll likely be seeing in 2023 MacBooks, a quick word from the sponsor of this video, Hero Wars. It's about that time of the year again, Halloween. And this year, Hero Wars is opening a portal between reality and the game world. Hero Wars is celebrating by giving away prizes in the form of 160 Amazon digital gift cards ranging from $50 to $500. So now it's time for you to enter the competition. But first, 10,000 people need to open the portal. The more people, the more prizes will be drawn. All you have to do to enter is download the game via the link below or QR code, complete a short in-app tutorial, and sign up for a free game account and get an in-game ID to enter into the sweepstakes. And that's all, you're entered to win. The sweepstakes are open to non-registered users of Hero Wars that are over the age of 18 and are legal residents of the United States. You don't need to purchase anything to win. Hero Wars is a fantasy online action RPG game. It's just fun to play in general. My favorite heroes are Jorgen and Astaroth, just because they look the coolest. Over 100 million players have enjoyed this game and now it's your turn. Let's open a portal to the Dominion together, so click on the special link in the description or scan my QR code right here on the screen and download Hero Wars before October 31st to get a chance to win some amazing prices. Now, let's get back to the video. Getting back to MacBooks, Apple teased us with the M2 chip earlier this year. And despite all the fancy buzzwords and marketing, it's really just an M1 chip that's been going to the gym regularly and has put on a bit of muscle. In real life workflows, we didn't see that much improvement. And remember that any noticeable improvement came at the cost of increased wattage and heat output, which the chassis of the M2 MacBook Air and even MacBook Pro often struggled to dissipate. And this totally makes sense. I mean, remember, the M2 is still on a five nanometer process, which Apple calls five nanometer plus. It's essentially the same as M1. And you've probably seen by now all the three nanometer process rumors swirling around. And while no one knows the exact date it will be released, make no mistake, three nanometer is coming and it's coming soon. Now, why is three nanometer important? 
Well, nanometer size refers to the width between transistors on a chip. The smaller the number, the more transistors can be squeezed onto a single chip, making them more powerful, but also more challenging and costly to produce. And partly because it's more challenging and costly to produce, right now, TSMC in Taiwan, who makes the majority of Apple Silicon chips for Apple, is struggling. And it looks like they've delayed production of the three nanometer process for several months. Not to mention the US recently placed a ton of insanely restrictive sanctions on China, which may have a knock on effect on TSMC's supply and manufacturing chains. Check out my previous video on that subject if you're interested. Whatever happens, Apple is by far TSMC's biggest and most loyal customer. So they will prioritize Apple over all other companies. And I'm confident we will see brand new three nanometer Apple Silicon next year. But what kind of improvements will these new chips bring? Well, allegedly a 15% speed improvement at the same power level as the current five nanometer chips, or a 30% reduction in power consumption for comparative speeds. So perhaps not a massive amount in terms of raw performance, but it does seem they will be extremely efficient, which is great for a laptop. That being said, personally, I don't wanna see upgraded 14 and 16 inch MacBooks anytime soon, despite what some of these leaks and rumors are saying. I think Apple should hold off until the end of 2023 at the earliest, as the M1 Pro and M1 Max are already really capable devices. Same with the M2 MacBook Air. I mean, I don't think we'll see any updates until 2024, which again, makes total sense. However, one MacBook I'd personally love to see is a 15 inch MacBook Air. I did a poll a few weeks ago and almost 50% of you said Apple should make this product. And I think there is a big market for it. 13 inch screens are simply far too small for many users. And I think there's a significant group of people who don't need the performance and premium features of a 16 inch MacBook Pro, but also want the larger screen size for productivity. Remember that the old 15 inch MacBook Pros from the 2015 era were some of the most loved MacBooks of all time, despite their issues. Now Apple could make a 15 inch version of the Air that is very thin and light, but with an M2 or M3 chip and maybe less ports than the 14 or 16 inch MacBook Pro models to cut down on price and size of the chassis. A three nanometer chip and increased cooling capability of a bigger chassis would also likely cut down on a lot of the thermal issues we saw with the M2 MacBook Air. Sure, a 15 inch Air wouldn't be quite as portable as the current 13 inch version, but I certainly think if it's thin and light enough, it's more than worthy of the Air branding. At the moment though, it's really up in the air, get it whether or not this product could come out. There are rumors and there is a potential market for it, but should Apple really be introducing another MacBook to their lineup in the current global situation? Maybe not. And this brings me to my next point, the Mac mini. In my opinion, it's in big need of a refresh. And I think Apple is going to do this in 2023. The current design, lack of ports, and M1 chip is aging fast. And for those of you that haven't been following this channel, the Mac mini is actually my favorite Apple Silicon Mac. Sure, the Air is awesome and I love my M1 Max MacBook Pro, but the tiny form factor, performance, and extremely budget cost of the Mac mini is simply unbeatable. Back in 2020, you could pay 699 bucks and get the full performance of the M1 chip the most powerful Apple Silicon Mac at the time, with no thermal throttling or fan noise. And often this price was discounted in later months, meaning you could pick up a brand new one for around 550 bucks. Now, I tried to build a budget PC around the same price as the Mac mini in 2021, I just couldn't get anywhere near the form factor and performance of the Mac mini. Coming into 2023 though, I think this would be the perfect Mac to upgrade. Intel has really upped their game with their entry level 13th gen CPUs, and we're facing a potential recession, the cost of living is skyrocketing, and most people don't have a lot of cash to spend. So what if you could pick up a really powerful M2 or M3 Mac mini 
with way more performance than a MacBook Air or even 13 inch MacBook Pro because of no thermal throttling, but for almost half the price. That's a pretty enticing offer. Personally, I think we'll see a minor change to ports on the back with more Thunderbolt ports and possibly additional ports on the front, similar to the Mac Studio. The form factor itself won't change much though, in my opinion, contrary to some of the leaks out there. While a thinner chassis and Pro Display XDR-esque grills would look cool, remember that the Mac Mini is often used in server farms and a new chassis would mean all the existing server racks would need to be changed. And finally, we get to the product I'm most curious to see, a potential Apple Silicon Mac Pro. Remember, Apple has completely moved away from Intel CPUs in all of their Mac lineups as of 2021, except the Mac Pro. It's still currently available for purchase on the Apple website, and I'd love to see the sales data for it over the last 18 months because I doubt many people at all are buying it. So it makes sense for Apple to finally rid themselves of Intel completely and update it to Apple Silicon. There's a couple of issues with this though, and I'll touch on that later, but the reason I'm so curious to see what Apple does with this product is because up until now, the Apple Silicon chips we've seen have been mostly focused on efficiency and not pure raw performance. Almost all of the chips have been designed primarily for portable laptops and not a beefy desktop system. Sure, we had the M1 Ultra Max Studio, but even then, the emphasis still wasn't really on pure performance. It barely sipped 100 watts of power under full load, and it produced almost zero fan noise and heat. This does make sense though, because despite it being the most powerful Apple Silicon chip currently available, the M1 Ultra Max Studio isn't really designed for super intense workflows. It's mainly for entry to mid-level professionals or boutique agencies. Anything above that is typically where a Mac Pro would come in. And early estimates of the power of an Apple Silicon Mac Pro are insane, with Mark Gurman saying that he believes the Mac Pro will come with up to 48 CPU cores and 152 GPU cores in some kind of M2 or M3 Extreme chip. But like I said, there are issues. In this price range and customer demographic, Apple is competing with the finest offerings from Nvidia, Intel, and AMD. And just like the RTX 3080 absolutely destroyed the M1 Ultra in many areas with its sheer power and optimizations like ray tracing and optics, the same can be said for whatever Apple Silicon Mac Pro comes out. Many workflows are still simply not optimized to take advantage of powerful Apple Silicon. So in many cases, why bother buying it? And this may be why Apple has held off on releasing it. Maybe at this time, there's just not a large enough target market who would be interested in buying such a premium and expensive product when the value proposition isn't there yet. Regardless, Apple needs to upgrade the Mac Pro, and soon, because it's now two years since the first Apple Silicon Mac was released, and they need to give Intel the final kick out the door. Whatever ends up happening, or doesn't end up happening because of supply chain, recession, war, or inflation issues, it's gonna be very interesting to see how the Mac evolves in 2023. But I'm just some dude in a spare bedroom on the internet, so let me know what you think down in the comment section below.